So you're just starting Diablo 4. Perhaps you just got to the main town and now you're kind of wondering, okay, so what should I actually do in order to progress my account? Let's explain that to you. The very first thing you want to do is go through your yellow missions, which are your primary story-based missions. There's a lot of reasoning behind this. A lot of the game is actually locked out to you without doing your primary missions. So you don't want to just go open world exploring right off the bat. One of the most things that's locked behind you that you really want is your mount. Your mount will massively increase your movement speed around the map, which is, is basically a necessity considering how large this map actually is. The other reason you want the map is because one of the things we're gonna do first is collect all the altars of Lilith if you want to get your character as strong as possible. So having increased movement speed will be highly important for this reason. In order to actually unlock the mount, you have to pursue your primary quest literally anyway. The mount unlocks at the beginning of Act 4. So just do your yellow missions until you unlock one of these priority quests that's called Donan's Favor. That's at the beginning of Act 4. It's gonna have you talk to a person right here in the Stable Master. It's like a 10 second quest. It will unlock your horse. If you want a horse skin, by the way, you can come by live and give two gift subs while I'm live will get you this skin for a horse. And it's the largest horse in the game. Just quick plug. So let's say you got to act four, you got the horse, and now you're wondering, okay, DM, what do I do after the horse? Well, there's a split opportunity. You can either immediately do the altars of Lilith all around the map, which would take you three to four hours of like hard grind, of paying attention and using an interactive map. I will put in the pinned comment. The interactive map will show you where all of them are, and then you can do your path and figure out how you're gonna get them. That took me about three or four hours of grinding, and this will give you a factual objective linear progress to your character because you get raw stats like raw strength, dexterity, uh, intelligence, even paragon ports, points, which will be very important once you hit level 50 because these rare nodes require raw stats. You can see I got another 14% core damage because this one, I have the 360 intelligence required and a large amount of these stats are actually coming from the altars. So as soon as you get the horse at act four, you can go and do all of these. The other train of thought as well, just push through the story. Now you have the horse, the story will be faster anyway. It's only all the way to act six. So you're about halfway through the story by the time you get the horse, you can finish the story and then do the altars afterwards. And the story itself will have you unlock a lot of the waypoints so you can teleport a bit around the map and it's a little bit nicer. There's no correct answer to this. Technically, if you do them sooner, your character will be stronger sooner, but you also save some time with the waypoints later on. So you can really decide whatever you want with this decision. Once you complete the story, it's going to unlock the world difficulty like selector for you. You're gonna have one and two, and then number three is going to be sitting here and it's going to be locked. And in order for you to be able to actually go up to world tier three, you're going to have to beat the capstone dungeon. Now the capstone dungeon is basically a yellow dungeon that will appear on the map. For me, this is the Echo of Hatred because it's the tier four one, but each world tier two has a capstone dungeon, world tier three is a capstone dungeon, world tier four is a capstone dungeon. In order to go the world tier three, you have to beat the world tier two capstone dungeon. Now this is about a level 50 challenge. The gear that drops from world tier three is about level 50 anyway. So right around that time is when that capstone dungeon will be more achievable. I have seen people push it way sooner, but just from a standard point around level 50, you can start thinking about, yeah, I can probably get the capstone dungeon for world tier three out of the way. The reason these world tiers are so important is you only have normal gear and then you have sacred gear only starting in World Tier 3. So you actually get a whole like tier up and improvement in gear, which factually gives you stronger secondary stats. So you can see, for instance, this is a sacred piece right here, which will have better than a standard legendary. And then an Ancestro, which is World Tier 4, which again will be the same thing. You'll beat the World Tier 3 capstone dungeon to unlock World Tier 4, is then Ancestral gear, which will be even stronger. And this obviously goes for rare items, et cetera, as well. So for that reason, pushing world tiers is how you make your character stronger. Now you might be in world tier two with the story completed and thinking, okay, I'm not strong enough yet for the world tier dungeon. Um, I can't get to world tier three. What do I do in the meantime? Luckily, the story does a pretty decent job of explaining this. There's something called the tree of whispers that unlocks as soon as you complete your campaign. So between completing the campaign and trying to push for World Tier 3, you're probably gonna find yourself doing some of these. These Tree of Whispers effectively are gonna move you around the map. The hard red ones give you five points, the pink ones give you one point, and the medium red ones give you three points when you have 10 total points, and it does over cap. So if you have nine and then gain five, you have four in the next tier when you turn it in. When these, oh, when these cap at 10 points, you turn it in the Tree of Whispers, you get a cache of items, and you can actually sort of target pick if you get like an amulet, a ring, a glove, 
you know, whatever. So this is a good way to get aspects. So one of the things you actually do want to do while you're trying to level, et cetera, is maybe consider while you're in the earlier world tiers, because it's just as easy to do them now as later, is getting some of your class aspects the class aspects will allow you to be able to complete some of your builds. So now that you've got the campaign done, you can start thinking about what kind of builds you want. You can watch some guides from people on the builds or theory craft your own. And during this time while you're gaining levels before you do your capstone, it's also a good time to consider picking up some of these aspects. The good thing about both doing the tree as well as the aspects is at the same time as they can double dip. The tree will actually send you to clear dungeons quite often, so you can do both at the same time. And then on top of it, it's very efficient because dungeons themselves give renown and you need to finish your renown for every region because you literally get skill points from this. This is 10 skill points from doing renown, which is another reason the Altar of Lilith is so important. And it's 20 paragon points from doing renown. That effectively means when you're completely capped in the game, a level 100, everyone who's completed all their renown basically has a level 105 worth of Paragon power as you get four Paragon points per level. So this is a massive increase in damage as is the skill points. And the skill points are basically mandatory for builds. Every build is going to have the skill points and skill points are going to do everything from helping you generate, you know, manner, spirit, etc., to giving you more tanky stats. So this is a completely mandatory. Now, while you're going through the game and doing all of these things, pushing, make sure that you go to gameplay and have your advanced tooltip and advanced uh, tooltip information compare on. That way, when you get a new drop of items, especially when you go to the new tiers here, you can hold shift and it will actually tell you what item is better and what stats you will lose if you choose to use that item. This is a nice way to compare, you know, damage, etc. But also it's very important because when you get an aspect, let's say, oh, this legendary drops. I'm like, oh, a new legendary. And I want to see how good the aspect is. Right here, it says 60% damage. You see how it says 60 to 90? So I know this aspect rolled an absolute minimum and it's not that good of an aspect. So I don't have to worry about ruining it too much. But if these options were off and I actually look at this item, it just says 60%. And for all I know, that's the best one in the game. So it does actually significantly change the information presented and available to you for decisions to be made if you don't have those two tips on which is a good time to mention that the aspects, you can save them, even though they show that there's a normal aspect, there's sacred aspect and the ancestral aspect, a commonly misunderstood thing is that only normal can go on normal items, sacred on sacred, ancestral on ancestral. Normal legendary aspects can go on ancestral items all the way in tier four and on sacred items. For this reason, items that you find in the wild in the beginning, even to world tier one, that have like, oh wow, that's a perfect row. For instance, like this one, you see how that's an absolute maximum row. These aspects, can be extracted in the beginning of the game, saved as an aspect for a literal month later when you get a perfect item. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so you complete the campaign, you got the altars, you got the dungeons you want, you're ready to push the capstone dungeons, you're going to world tier three. As soon as you hit world tier three, then you're gonna start getting sacred item drops. These sacred item drops are going to massively increase your attack power, armor, life, basically all of your stats because the sacred items, like I've been saying, are going to roll higher. At this time, you have a very tough decision to make. Do you use some of the aspects you saved on your newly acquired upgrades, or do you wait a little bit in tier three until you get a really good sacred item drop? My argument to this would be like, if you have any mid tier aspects, just throw them in there. Anything that's still an absolute perfect row on game changing build items, for instance, like the Grizzly Dire Werewolf build or uh, the duration of Grizzly Rage, for instance, for me is, is quite important for my specific build. I would be very careful with those until you have like a GG item that seems very specific for your build or a very good item, okay, just in general. However, the other ones, once you hit the next tier, world tier three, yes, you can start using some of them. And then once you're pushing world tier three to world tier four, the world tier four capstone dungeon to get to world tier four is very difficult. So you could use the boost in power at that time as well. Just answering the question about aspects is a very common question is, when do I use the aspects? And very often my answer to that will be when you need the spike of power to beat whatever content you're working on. In World Tier 3, your Tree of Whispers is going to start dropping you Sigils as well as the occasional Glyph. Glyphs are going to go into your Paragon board and the Paragon board unlocks at level 50. These Glyphs are fairly game changing as they will give you everything from basically a permanent vulnerability uh, application to just pure bonus damage or damage reduction. So they will be very important. 
and the nightmare sigils that are now unlocked from pushing through the game are going to allow you to do these dungeons and get experience to level up your glyphs as well. So consider once you're in world tier three, doing some of the lower tier uh, nightmare dungeon through your sigils. Now you can actually craft these as well at the occultist. So if you don't have a sigil that's low enough level for you, you can craft them there. Something to keep in mind is continue to look at the map because world bosses that show up, for instance, like right here, etc. All of these world bosses do not have some kind of global text announcement. You have to look at the map and they'll have a circle with a timer saying it's a world boss. And the world bosses can drop you a lot of legendaries. So that can be quite important as well. The other thing to mention is Helltide zones. So you're gonna see these red zones pop up that say a Helltide is here and they last for like an hour. Those are gonna be very important too because they're going to drop the materials from like the mining nodes, et cetera. And what those materials actually end up doing here is uh, they'll give you forgotten souls. And these forgotten souls are basically the most imperial uh, important material in the game because not only do they allow you to upgrade your items to the maximum tier which you're going to want to do once you have a perf per, uh, perfect aspect on like a really good item for instance uh, you'll upgrade those all the way which gives you massive increase in damage but they're also used for enchanting which will allow you to reroll one stat that you do not like on an item so you can have a you know a, one that's three perfect stats and one of the stats is whack or something so you can reroll that for something that's a good stat and for that reason you're going to want forgotten so so when the hell tides come up farm in the hell tides and you get lots of forgotten souls from the chest, from mining the nodes that are around, they're just clicking on the nodes that are glittering and then killing the big elite monsters. Also, just a quick tip, if you hit Control R, it will allow you to put your frames per second on the screen. Control R again will show you your lag. So if you just want a little bit of additional UI. And speaking of tips, your horse, if you have the cursor close to you, move slower. My friend Jake pointing this out to me. And then if you move your mouse farther away, the horse actually starts running faster. And this is the same for when you do things like hitting the space bar, et cetera, with the boost. So if you're wondering why my horse is slow, even with the boost, move your cursor farther away. So at this point in the game, you're probably at world tier three. You are pushing and you are trying to level and wondering what do I actually do? The best thing to do is farm hell tides when they come up, world bosses when they come up, nightmare dungeons in order to level your glyphs. So continue to farm with your sigils and you can get your first ones from doing the tree of whispers. However, if now, if you have not done your renown yet, it is a really good time in world tier three to do the renown. You still get a lot of experience for running around, getting the altars, doing side quests, picking up the waypoints, and this will also unlock all of the strongholds for you, which will unlock every waypoint in the game. So I highly recommend right around this time to begin maxing out your renown if you have not already done so. So at this point, you will be pushing levels to make it easier. Levels are a really big deal when it comes to actually being able to defeat content. The content for uh, Torment is effectively a level 73 capstone dungeon, which is when you're in world tier three, doing the capstone to unlock a Torment will be a level 73 dungeon. I've seen it get done depending upon the class as early as like level 53, but you know, you might take you to level 60, 65 or something, depending upon what class you're playing. If you're doing it solo or you're having a friend help you through the capstone, etc. And at that point, once you get into world tier four, the equipment that you can wear starts dropping at level 60. So once you're level 60, you should really start trying to get into world tier four because the ancestral items are going to be a big step up in terms of stats. One other common question I see is people ask about unique item drops. Unique items will drop as soon as world tier three. However, not all of them will. New uniques are available at world tier four. So if you're looking for certain uniques for your build, most of the ones that you see for the meta builds would drop in world tier tier three, but on the occasion, the, some of the uniques only come in world tier four. So if you can't get that last one, maybe look up which unique it is and which tier it drops in. So once you're in world tier four, it's really about farming and getting the right ancestral items, especially a good weapon. At that point, you can begin upgrading your items with everything you got from farming the hell tides. You can begin rolling up and crunching your gems. For instance, the gems at this point, you can take your flawless and turn them into royal gems, which unlocks, I believe at level 70 or 80, I forget off the top of my head, I think it might be 80. And then you can take those gems, slot them in and give yourself a factual improvement on your character. Because world tier four gives you more experience, this is going to mean that you definitely want to farm in world tier four once you can actually clear mobs. So that would be my advice at this point is it's more about levels to get Paragon points in order to fill out the board and get the board you actually need. So I would begin the leveling process. A way to be very efficient with this is by leveling through the uh, Nightmare Sigils as well as doubling down and doing the Nightmare Dungeons that also happen to be a, uh, a Tree of Whisper. And you can kind of get a 
threesome of it's the Tree of Whisper, it's the Nightmare Sigil I need, and maybe it's a dungeon I haven't done yet for my renown. You can kind of do them all at once. During this entire time, it is very important that you are using potions. If you have them, they will give you for 30 minutes a 5% experience increase, which is for all experience you're receiving across the board, which is very important. You can actually craft these elixirs with the items that you pick up across the world. So do not forget to click and pick up like the little nodes, either things like ore, because you need them for a blacksmith later, or these flowers, etc. you see around the world as you can turn these basically into experience. Keep in mind your potion upgrading is important as well. This will increase how much you instantly heal when you use a potion. So definitely make sure you're upgrading your potions at level 1, 10, 20, 30, 45, 60, 70, 80, and of course 90. With levels, we'll upgrade the oboe vendor as well. I've seen people ask like, why won't my oboe vendor drop me ancestral items? I'm in tier four. You have to get higher level. I don't know at what levels it unlocks, but the ancestral items as I level started to unlock. And you can see the yellow ones are sacred, the kind of whitish ones are ancestral. So if you can't gamble for the current tier gear you're on, you just need to do some more leveling. This isn't too important because honestly, the gambles aren't really a big deal because doing the overworld can be, uh, you know, the events can be a little bit of a waste of time. It is good experience, but I prefer just straight up grinding. And if you want gambling, you can actually farm the PVP zone Seeds of Hatred. And there is a guy right here that allows you to gamble using those seeds. So it's almost like a way of farming old bows and the drop rate of the legendary seems to be pretty good. You'll continue all these patterns of like nightmare dungeon farming, et cetera, until you get whatever build you're working built out. And at that point, you're basically just min-maxing gear and doing your levels. And you can either choose to get in experience farms with people to grind dungeons over and over again if you're just trying to rush experience, or you can play the way that God intended and just finish out side missions, finish out the overworld, do bosses when they show up, and of course, grind out your nightmare dungeons, which is gonna be a big chunk of the end game. And at that point, you're pretty much set. And once you get to there, you'll know what to do for yourself and your account to continue to progress. If this helped at all, consider liking or subscribing or coming by the live stream. And that would be right here. And I'll put in the pig comment. It's twitch.tv slash Darth Microtransaction. So consider coming by and watching me live and ask me a question or two or gift two subs while I'm live in order to get yourself the primal mount skin. This is the skin. The money goes to me and I will be using the money to purchase a new computer as mine is older and I would like to increase my editing power. With that being said, I love you all. Appreciate you watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.